welcome to a walk down Libertyville's Milwaukee Avenue. From Winchester Road to Rockland Road. First look at the west side of the street and then the east side. And along the way we'll see how things used to be. This of course now is the Winchester House. And across Winchester Road is a small shopping center. <laughs> I think this used to be down by Lake Manier years ago. Now we come to Johnson Avenue, where the Sinclair gas station with the ice house behind it was located. Today we have the North End Garage that once was a Hudson dealer and a Mercury dealer. Then we come to where Paul Duba Plumbing used to be and where they lived. To the left and behind Duba's Plumbing was Van Hackey's Feed Store. As I walked down towards the train tracks, I could see there was a lot of activity at the station. Well, it was Saturday morning and everybody was heading to Chicago for the St. Paddy's Day Parade. As the train passed by this good old coffee shop, I remembered Nat's oil. Some poor fellow got killed by a bear back there years ago. Here's the old town hall, now the American Legion. You remember where the old music house was? Randy TV once occupied this spot. Looking up Lake Street. Now the Egg Harbor Restaurant. It used to be Chet Flagg and Henry Soat's Standard Gas Station. And then Bernard Chevrolet Oldsmobile. Next door to Bernard's was Rosin's Liquor Store. I remember Dad bringing some venison here for cold storage. Tony Abadessa's Shoe Repair. Now a couple of restaurants it used to be Lester's Tavern and Rhinebox. Now I'll look back to Bernard's. And from Old Lester's we cross the alley to Smith's Shoes. Where you could watch your toes wiggle in the fluoroscope. And this fine building once held Flegelman's Department Store. And then Langworthy's. The men's department, or south end of Langworthy's, was once occupied by Taylor and Siler. These two restaurants were once occupied by first the gas company, and later Petronics and Keswick's next door. This picture left of the bank, you can see Scotty's restaurant. It was once a Cardinal bus line stop. It's 
Gotti's later became B Lots, and then Titus Brothers was on the corner. Titus Brothers and B Lots have become the picnic basket. Crossing Cook Street, we come to Cook Park. And the Cook Mansion, with the library behind it. And then Church Street. And a place many of us hung out at. First a hotel and cafe. In the 50s and 60s, the Chatterbox. The mid-70s, that place on the corner. Then we come to the new Mickey Finns. They used to be Kruger Motors. Then going past what was once the Independent Register Office, to Messenbrink's Floral Shop. And that's a 56 Ford in Hanlon Motors, which later became the Chrysler dealer. South of it was Whitey's City Service. And across from Broadway is the PNC Bank. And here you can see the City Service Station and the Phillips 66 on the Located here was Bernard's OK Used Cars. Also a pure gas station. Al and Tony Cavalier's bowling alley was here. Here came Miller Motors. You can see Burnett's funeral home on the left. It then became Miller Kruger. Maple Tower was on this corner. In the late 50s, this was a brand new Gulf gas station. Now a Shell gas station owned by Graham Oil. The old North Shore rail bed. Now Jerry's Marathon Station. It used to be Rush and Jerry's Shell, and then Jerry's Mobile. Across Sunnyside is the APS Auto Parts. Where Inger's Buick used to be located. And on the corner of McKinley was Molidor's Grocery Store. Which later became Brun's Home Center. And across McKinley is a Texaco gas station run by Danny McCormick and a guy named Shannon, but not at the same time. Located between these buildings was the Tasty Freeze, owned by the Josephsons of Libertyville Coal and Ice. crossing Lincoln Avenue. Carolyn's Pizza was back there. Now a Japanese restaurant used to be Proctor's Floral. Today the Liberty Restaurant, where the old Dog and Suds used to be. Now Downing's used to be Kroll's Tavern.
moving on to the corner of Rockland was Kroll's standard gas station. I believe it was Vicks. Across Rockland is a little strip mall where the Royal Blue used to be. And now back across the street for our journey north. The Dairy Queen on Rockland Road. Marty's Garage used to be Dick Gratz DX. Used to be Maiden's Hardware, now it's Ed's. And the site of Rudolph's Drive-In. Here on the corner of Lincoln, they used to hold the carnivals. Then Hanlon had a used car lot here. An Oklahoma gas station, followed by an Exxon, Ted Soat's garage, and now the auto lab. In a garage behind this house, Tom Hoskins and Charlie Gayhart showed me how to smoke. And across Sunnyside Avenue, now a law office, was a Sinclair station with milk dispensing machines on the right, and then the animal hospital. <laughs> Here was the North Shore train station, here in about 1905. And this in the 40s. This empty lot had a shell station on it. Before that, Gustafson Pontiac. Across Park Avenue was the newer Joe's Fireside. But before that, the original. Note the milk bottle on top. It's out at Lamb's Farm now. The National Parking Lot was our hangout. I remember once after Big Rain, the roof caved in. Here enjoying lunch, you look across the street at Century 21, what used to be a bank building. Before the bank was Barry Insurance Agency on Hurlbut Court. Where St. Joseph's Catholic Church now sits was Phillips 66. Central Park was flooded in the winter for ice skating. On this corner was J.C. Roos. Beam and Shrek Insurance and Rut K. Jewelers. Hall's Barbershop and Von Drasic's TV. Huffman's Grocery and Scotty's Restaurant. The Public Service Building. Under the clock tower was a tunnel through to the back of the building. There was a pretty little sitting area back here. Ruth's Dress Shop. I'm sure glad they removed that ugly front. It looks a lot better now. Taylor's and then Wilson's Drug Store. And moving across Church Street. 
Jay's Shoes and Julian's Men's Store. Parkside Liquors, The Cleaners, and Flags Bar. From Flags to Mickey Finn's and now to O'Toole's. This was the alleyway between Flags and the A&P. It became Arden's Furniture, and I hear soon to be an Indian motorcycle shop. An aerial view of what we just covered. And now let's make our way across Cook Street to what was Thompson's and Skank's Hardware. Ace Hardware, followed by Chandler's. Factors, Woman's Clothing and the Newcastle Hotel. On the right side of Factors, there was an alleyway. It's been reopened again and leads to a very important place. A little tavern called the Island that once was called Felix's. In this section used to be Woolworths. In the 20s was Flags, Liberty Theater, and where the people are, the post office. Now Starbucks, then the bank, and what was the Gridley Building. Crossing School Street. IGA and remember those prices? The IGA became Wiles, woman's store, Schwant Real Estate, Sporting Goods, and Clavey's Hardware. Then came the Liberty Barber Shop, Western Tire and Auto, and Gibson's. And the Liberty Barber Shop today. And then by the green room I saw a cute little sight. A little girl with a piece of chalk just enjoying the day. She was making pretty colors in front of what was once Lund's Restaurant. Now we make our way across Newberry and look back on the old Liberty Theater. The current Marathon gas station used to be the old Clark gas station, and the attendant would wait on you for a cigarette. Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul Railroad. And this little building used to be the site of Mario's Pizza. Stop in and look at the floor Mario laid. Bike shop now, this used to be Taylor Furniture. Across Apley Avenue, this business used to be Sid's Super Service. An Italian Restaurant by Ellis Avenue. Currency Exchange.
Joseph's Floral Shop that used to be Liberty Auto Parts. We've reached Winchester Road once again and the end of our walk. I hope you enjoyed our stroll down Libertyville's Milwaukee Avenue.